Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's pretty gray and rainy here, but it's probably gonna be okay. I hope it's gonna be okay where you are, too. Um, so today I thought I would talk a little bit about crappy data structures and how they can be very nice uh, and helpful and useful and some of the crappy data structures in the Serenity kernel. So, um, as most of you know, I don't have any prior experience building operating systems or kernels or anything like that. I never worked on these things. So, um, I'm very naive about many things, um, in, especially in kernel development, but I sort of try to power through anyway and figure things out as, as I go. And so far, so good. But um, it's very often the case that I get to some um, something that I know that I need to implement, and I can tell that um, there's probably a really good data structure to use for this. But since I can't think of one, and I still want to make progress, I just uh, like smash together a vector and a hash map or something like that, uh, and just go about my day. And then, I mean, make the thing work using those simple building blocks, but then just move on and make progress. And very, very, very often that works out just fine. And, and you know, I get the new interface that I'm looking for, and I can start using it um, to write better user space code. And uh, then it's not until much, much further down the down the road that. Um, this data structure that I chose a long time ago starts to become a pain point because now we're calling this interface a whole lot and maybe we have um, you know all of n squared um, traversal instead of something um, you know nicer like O log n or whatever and then it's it becomes time to do, to go and evaluate like okay should we change this data structure now to something better um, what can we use. What, can, what have we learned about um, about the needs here since we added it? Like, what are the actual usage patterns? And I find that that's, that's a very, very sensible um, form of engineering, that you, you choose something uh, simple that you can get up and running, and then uh, it's not until it becomes a pain point that you go and try to figure out what would be a better data structure. And I think as long as you're maintaining like good engineering hygiene and um, good abstraction, then it's not too much trouble to slot in a different data structure because it's all about keeping a uh, clean and steady API. Uh, because if you have a good API to whatever your thing is, then it shouldn't matter so much what the underlying data structure is. Um, and an example of that right now is um, mmap. So mmap in Serenity um, calls to the kernel, obviously, which instantiates uh, this thing called a region uh, in the kernel. And every process has a set of regions. And it's just uh, basically each region represents some slice of the process address space. And a process's regions uh, are all kept in an unsorted uh, vector. And that's it. So whenever we are uh, like looking for a region, say that we want to we want to allocate a new region, and we want to find out, well, is this part of the address space already taken by something else? Then we have to iterate over that uh, vector of regions every time. Every time we have a page fault to figure out which region the fault was in, we have to walk that vector of regions. So it's O of n um, lookup on this thing. And when you start to have hundreds or thousands of regions, like some of the more complex software that, I'm, that I've been um, messing with lately, like um, the port of the VVVVVV game, um, just uses a ton of mmaps. And it happens because they do a ton of malloc. <coughs> and um, they end up just sitting and looping over that vector a lot. And it, it, then it starts to feel like maybe it's time to to go and look at a better, better data structure, and have to I have to actually have to actually look into it and see what would be a good one. Like I know that 
Um, o of n is obviously not great. Um, it would be nice to, to get it to O of log n, um, possibly with a um, fast cache on the side for like, you know, is this one of the last four things that you looked up or whatever? Then if so, we have a like fast little vector on the side that we scanned where we just cached the last four lookups. I don't know, things like that, you know? Um, and can we come up with a data structure that's cache friendly? Um, but it's not until we get to this point right now where it's becoming a problem, that's, that's when we start to look at it. And uh, another good example of this is the kernel's heap allocator, kmalloc, which has been a piece of crap since I started, and <laughs> it still is a piece of crap, and it has all these irritating limitations, but it just kind of sort of works still, so the incentive to go and do something about it um, is just like, just out of reach. <laughs> um, but eventually, eventually I'm gonna have to, or someone is gonna have to, because um, kmalloc is, uh, it's allocating everything uh, out of a, it's a, uh, it's a first fit allocator um, that just manages a, a static pool of memory in I think 16 byte chunks with like a bitmap that just tracks which parts are used and which ones are not. And it's all at like a hard-coded memory address. There's no randomization. And um, there's a hard limit, I think, of three megabytes. If you came out like more than three megabytes, your kernel will panic. And obviously, that's not a very good data structure for, for all the reasons I just described. Um, and it needs to be replaced eventually. But Every time that I start to brush up against um, against getting too many kmalloc out of memory errors, so far there's always been some little tweak that I could do that would just buy me another month or two. Um, I think the last one was that I just added a megabyte to the kmalloc pool because it started running out of memory. But it's starting to, to get there again sometimes and also I've become aware, I mean, I've become far more aware of the security concerns of just of having like non-randomized memory layouts. And the fact that kmalloc is always at a predictable location, it's not super great. And um, I would like to put it somewhere random, put the whole kernel somewhere random, um, all kinds of things like that. Um, but it still works, and I'm probably not gonna sit down and work on it today, but sometime in the near future, we're gonna get to the pain point where we have to do, make a change. I'll probably work on MMAP before that, though. Um, but, but this is about crappy data structures, right? And um, as, as much as I dislike these two data structures, like the, um, the vector of memory regions and just a statically sized uh, bitmap managed pool of kmalloc memory. They also got the system to the point where it is today. Like they've been chugging along uh, with their stupid data structureness, just keeping things going and keeping things developing. And I think that's a great testament to the power of crappy data structures. Um, because thanks to the abstraction that's on top of these things, um, we've still been able to build this amazing uh, stack on top. And especially if you look at the uh, region stuff, the interface, like the public interface on top of that is just MMAP. And um, there's absolutely no difference to user space um, what kind of data structure MMAP uses internally, right? So. Um, there's a nice comfort in that, that, that I can go and mess around with the internals of how MMAP stores things, and none of user space has to be rewritten. And I like that. And then, of course, inside the kernel, there's also like uh, abstractions that don't need to be rewritten, like um, the interface in, in a process for asking for a region um, that can be placed anywhere in the address space. That doesn't have to change either. 
it's really just the internal storage of these functions and, and like the way that they do lookup uh, and the way that they do insertions and so on, that has to change. But it's pretty cool. I like, I, I, it's something I really like about programming. Uh, I like abstraction. I like, I like building things in such a way that you can slot in a different data structure later on. And I think that C++ is a language that allows you to do this with great ease. And I am grateful for that. Thank you, C++. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess I am grateful for C++. It's, uh, it's a good travel buddy, you know? Wow, I don't know where that came from, but... Um, and, of course, we have some other crappy data structures in the kernel as well. Um, and the lack of randomization that I mentioned is something that's starting to annoy me more and more. Because um, like, every time I, I see the kernel symbols file now, uh, <laughs> I can't unsee the fact that uh, once you have a kernel read or write primitive, then you can go in and um, trivially mess with the state of the kernel. And I just have to do something about that. Ah, geez. <laughs> um, but someone mentioned on IRC that he was interested in implementing uh, kernel address space um, layout randomization, KSLR, Kazzler, but I don't know if anything will come of that. It would be fun if it does. Otherwise, I'll just sit down myself and do it sooner or later. Um, but, you know, I, I, if someone wants to work on something in Serenity, then I try to make space for them because I have so many things I want to do anyway. And it, it's not, it doesn't seem like a requirement for me to work on any specific thing. And certainly, if, if someone else is super interested in something, I'm very happy to to let them work on that. And uh, I'm a bit surprised to find myself feeling that way. I guess I earlier on I, I would have thought I might have been like protective of it. But it's it's really astonishing when you work with people in open source how you grow to trust them and you grow to like them, and you grow to, I don't know, like, I want, I want everyone who works on the system to, like, succeed at it, right? And to do a great job, and to grow as a programmer, and to have fun, and um, if I can do that by just, um, you know, stepping aside and working on something else that also interests me, then it seems like such a great bargain, or a great deal for everybody. Yeah. Anyways, that's just something I was thinking about lately. And it's super cool to have so many people working on the system. And um, if you're interested, then you can come and check out working on it too if you like. There's a million things to do. And if everyone just uh, uses the system a little bit and figures out something that bothers them and then tries to fix that, then the sky is the limit. So, anyway, I'm running off track here, so I'm just going to say thank you for hanging out with me on the commute and listening to me babble about some crappy data structures that could be better, that should be better eventually, that I need to rewrite. And uh, in the spirit of what I just said, if you would like to rewrite these data structures, then let me know, and I, I won't do it. <laughs> so you can do it if you like. Um, but I guess the one thing I would say about that is if someone says that they want to do something, and then I'm happy to step aside. But if nothing happens, like in the next few days, then I, I might pick it up anyway. Um, because I uh, can't step aside forever. Anyways, I hope you understand. Thanks for hanging out with me on the commute, everybody. And... Hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.